three lessons left. This is it, folks. There we go. Your dreams are all about to come true. Well, let's look at a few different things today. Geometry. And these are pretty straightforward here. What's the volume of the geometric solid formed by a folding shape along the dashed lines? Now, you'll, what you see is, and you can actually see a picture of this as well, but this is what this figure looks like if you were to fold it up. It looks like this, and it looks like this, and you kind of do it like this, and then boom, boom, and then this part right here is five or whatever. So, you know, the volume of a shape is basically the area of a base times the height, or length times width times height. So it's going to be 3 times 4 times 5, which is 60. So that's the volume of that one. This one is another kind of a shape. It looks like if you were to draw it with, with the, the sides and fold it all up, it looked kind of like this. Ugh. Actually, it wouldn't look anything like that at all. No, it's not that bad here. Okay, there we go. And then, um, oh dear here. Let's see. We got this going, and that's one shape here. And it looks like this, and then kind of yeet like that, and then that's five across there as well, and so on. So anyhow, so that's going to be five there, and five at the bottom, and then four, and then here, and this will be three. Okay, so basically we have the volume of this shape, which we need to do all of these sides. So each one of these triangles is going to be six, because it's four times three, so there's six there, and then there's six in this one behind there as well. So six and six. And we have different sides here now. We've got four, and this is five, that'll be 20. And then we have another one at the bottom, which is five by, let's know the other side, excuse me, will be five by five, and that's 25. And then we have another one, which is three by five, the bottom there, which is 15. Add those all together, whatever the answer is. You guys can do that, so I'm gonna take a look. Okay, very quickly, we're gonna run through these. Defining symmetry. Basically is, in other words, it's like almost like a mirror test. Where is something symmetrical? In other words, if you draw a line down the middle of it, does it match up to the other side? And there's what they call a perpendicular line test, which I am horrible at drawing perpendicular lines. There's one right there. And you can see basically that using this perpendicular line test right up and down, you can tell that something is symmetrical if both sides are, if you look at it as a mirror right down the middle, they match each other as mirror images. So lines of symmetry in these figures. The, the, um, this is an equilateral triangle, which means all the sides are the same. So you could actually go like this and go right down the middle. That would make this symmetrical. You could also go right down the middle here, right? Oh dear, that is the worst line ever drawn. Something like that, right? This would be symmetrical. Of course, if you did exactly the other way, Unbelievable. Must be since must be somebody else's fault. It was my the previous administration did that stuff. Anyway, there's three lines of symmetry and that kind of thing. So alright, the square, good gravy. There's endless ones almost, okay? Right down the middle here is a line of symmetry. Of course, here is another one. And of course you could go here as well, you know, like that. And then, you know, hitting the corners exactly like I just did. Those are all lines of symmetry. Now there is a different kind of symmetry, which they call symmetric about a point, and there's around a point. So if this is any line drawn through the point is the same distance in both directions to a point in the figure. So if you have something like this, and in fact, you can go ahead and open your book if you want to. There is a picture of this on page 384. So you could draw, you know, uh, a line through, through this point like that. And this here length will be the same as this length here. You could draw it from here to here as well. And this length here would be the same length here. You could keep go from here to here, you know, and so on. That's symmetric about a point. All right, they're telling you this uh, figure is symmetric. And let's figure out what the area of this entire thing is. Now, by telling you it is symmetric, we are being told that this is going to be the same area as this, and this will be the same area as this. Now, both all four of those triangles will be two by two, broken in half, of course, because it's a triangle. So the area of both, all, all those triangles will be two, so the entire area is gonna be eight. Now look on page 385, there's some weird, kind of funky, of these problems, and uh, we'll do these, run through these very quickly, but uh, go ahead and start with A and B, and let's see if you can figure those out. Okay, A, we look at this figure, and it looks like this, you know, if you're looking at one, oh my 
goodness, that's horrible. Uh, three and two, and then it's you know some kind of a like this, and it is five units long, and the volume is going to be three by two by. Is that what they're asking for? Find the volume of each folded. Okay, yeah. So the volume is going to be three by two by five. Now it just reminds me it's going to be thirty. On this one, I was not looking for the volume, which I should have done that better. The volume of this thing, that's, not, that's incorrect. Yeah, I was doing the surface area, so that, that was a mistake on my part. The volume of this object means that this triangle would be considered the base. If a triangle is 3 by 4, then the base is going to be, excuse me, the area of that, of course, is going to be 12, divided by 2, which is 6. The height of that will be 5, so the entire volume will be 30. So at least I fixed that mistake. Okay, um, let's go to this one here. The, we're looking at volume again, and this will be, uh, you know, that's one side. And we'll go like this and draw it like this here. And we'll have, let's see, 2 here, and then that's going to be 4 there. And this is 8 here. All right, so we're looking at, basically, if we look at this as a big hunk of cheese, or this is the base right here. The area of the base will be eight divided by two, which is four. The height will be eight. So we have four times eight, so the volume of that figure is 32, okay? They're asking on these um, for uh, lines of symmetry, and of course you could probably go, okay, I see one right here, right down the middle, and of course there's another one right there. Oh, brother. And of course this is like an endless one, you know, like all the way down there and right through here and here and there and so on. Okay, so those are your lines of symmetry. All right, E, are these figures symmetric about a point, a line, or both? This is symmetric about a line. You can go right here, right here. And is this one symmetric about a line? Yeah, that's symmetric there. It's also symmetric here. Is it symmetric about a point? Can you put, have a, let's say there's a point right there. Is this distance here the same as this distance here? And the answer is yes. So those are both. All right. The last two here, these are, they're telling you there is symmetry in this uh, left figure, G. So let's figure out what the actual area of this is. Now, if they're telling you this is symmetrical about this point, then we know that all, all four of these semicircles have a radius of five. All right. We know that the area of a circle is uh, pi times the radius squared. So we could say the area of this circle here is pi times the radius squared, which is going to be 25 pi. Now don't forget that this is only a half a circle. So this would have to be cut in two, but you can you don't have to cut that in two and then multiply by two because there's you know that many. What you can do is go, okay, what I'm going to do actually, instead of multiplying by one, two, three, and four, I'm just going to multiply by two because uh, you know it's four of those, but they're half each of a circle. So the answer is gonna be 50 times pi, and that's around, let's say, 157, okay? This one, if you wanna pause it, of course, this is kinda of weird, and it's, they're telling you this is symmetrical as well. So what we're gonna to have to do is take this part here, and we're gonna move this over. And this is actually kinda of funny because this is like an S, one of those SAT type questions that sometimes you see on those standardized tests. So let's just get rid of this whole thing right here, all right? This is two, this is going to be two, and this part right here is going to be two from here to here. Now they want to know what is the area of this, you know, this filled in area. Well, you know, you, first of all, you think, what in the world, how do I do this? I've never done anything like this before. But all you'll need to do is think about it for a second. Look what you need to do to find just this filled in area, not the middle of the circle. Of course, that's, that's empty, but what's the area? Well, if you find the area of the entire circle and pretend there is no middle donut hole out of there, then all you'll need to do is find the whole thing, then subtract the donut hole, basically. Well, let's figure out what this thing is. That's going to be 2, 2, and 2. So this will be, if you're looking at all of this as one big circle, the radius, this part will be 1, right? From one part of the, the center of the donut hole to the edge of the donut hole is 1. So the radius of the actual big circle is three. So we know that the area of a circle is gonna be pi times the radius squared. One, two, three, so that'll be pi times three squared, which is nine. That's the area of the entire circle. But we don't want that. We want it just this part right here. 
So we're going to have to subtract this, uh, the area of this littler circle. And again, the area of that smaller circle is going to be the same thing, pi, e, pi uh, times the radius squared. Well, what is the radius of this circle? It's 1, right? Okay, so it'll be the area of this smaller circle will be pi times the radius squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1, so it's just 1 pi. 9 pi minus 1 pi is 8 pi. So approximately 25.12 or something like that is your area of that. Okay, hope you guys have a good day. Two more left. We're almost done. See you next time.